Hello everybody, thank you for joining me for my review of Book 4 in the Wheel of Time series, The Shadow Rising, by Robert Jordan. And just a heads up, there will be some spoilers in this review. Definitely on some major plot points. So, uh, this book, The Shadow Rising, has even more world building than the first three books. I would say it almost doubles the world building in one book. Now this is the longest book up to this point. I'm not sure if there's any that are longer in the series. And it took me a while to read it. And it's not so much because of the length, but because this book is so complex and I'm gonna admit a little bit confusing to me in some places that I reread a few sections, a few chapters, which I'll get into more when I get to those sections of the book, and also because I was actually even using the glossary quite a bit just to keep straight who was who and which areas, towns and things like that were what. Now, this can be taken as a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what type of books you like to read. For me, it's a good thing overall, but I do have a few nitpicks about this book, even though I liked it the best of the first four. I don't think it's quite a perfect book. I'd probably say it's like a 4.75 out of 5 if I could nitpick, but it's really, really good and well worth reading. So after the gang uh, kind of gets together again in the very early chapters of the book, which I kind of enjoyed, it was kind of nice to have a lot of main characters all in one area. And some of the stuff with Rand and Matt being attacked through mirrors and playing cards and things like that I thought was unique and inventive. But then the story kind of splits up and really gets going, and we basically get kind of four stories here. We get three main stories and one uh, very, very interesting and surprising kind of sub-story or subplot, which I will get into as well. So I think the best way to do this is just to go through all four of the stories from my favorite to my least favorite. I'll give the things I liked about them, and if I do have any complaints, I will give those about each section as well. There was definitely a lot more positive than negative, though, overall. So I'll start with the story I liked the best, which was Perrin's story, uh, which after reading a little bit more on it, um, I try not to spoil myself, but after I read the book, you know, I try and get feedback from the community, see what others thought of the book. Seems like a lot of people really like Perrin's story in this book, and I can understand why. I really like that he got to go back home to the Two Rivers, I believe is, is what it's called. Um, and I thought he was a great choice as the character to do this. We get a little bit more of his wolf dreams. I also enjoyed see, seeing some of the characters from Eye of the World return. And it kind of makes those early chapters, which I admittedly found a bit slow in that book, to have a little bit more meaning. I enjoyed seeing Rand's father, Tam, again. Hopefully Rand will get to see him, but I'm not sure if that'll happen or not. Not sure how sentimental Robert Jordan is for things like that yet. We also get a lot with the relationship of Perrin and Fail, Fail, Faley. I'm still not sure how to pronounce her name. Sorry, I'll probably mispronounce quite a few more names in this review, but I'll do my best. And I know that some don't find this relationship totally convincing, but I bought into it. And by the end, when they got married, I thought it was kind of sweet and sincere, to be honest, not to sound too corny, but it really worked for me. Now, where their characters go in the future, I don't know, but I also kind of enjoy how Perrin's a reluctant leader, almost like an underdog leader that kind of just falls into it through circumstance, which I really uh, kind of enjoy. Sometimes those are my favorite kind of leader stories uh, to go through, and there's also some nice, uh, I guess you'd call them villains in this part of the book. Uh, they're definitely annoying characters in Dane Bornhold and Jared Byer. I kind of get where Bornhold's coming from. Byer is just kind of a annoying character, but he's supposed to be, so that works well. There's also a few little sections of Pat and Fane in this part of the book, which I also enjoyed. But the thing that I really liked about this section of the book, In the Two Rivers, was you really get a sense of community. Robert Jordan really seems to understand how to write this kind of like small town uh, farming type community and I really appreciated that and I have to say the final battle in this section with the Trollocs, Trollocs um, was really kept me on the edge of my seat and I actually thought when the uh, townspeople were fighting fighting back I actually uh, had some feeling in that section of the book probably more than I've had in any of the other books so far uh, so when a book can do that to you that's really good writing by Robert Jordan. 
now I'll go into uh, Rand's storyline. Um, this one was uh, kind of crazy. So Rand is basically going through the waste, the uh, Aiel waste. I thought it was Ale, but I think it's pronounced Aiel. And uh, I'll give more on them in a second here. But uh, Rand basically is going through the waste, um, starting to fulfill his prophecy, I guess. And he goes to this place, Rudian. Again, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. But he basically has these nine visions. And this is where the book kind of threw me. Um, because I didn't figure out at first that they were in reverse order. Once I figured that out, it really helped me. I also read this chapter twice, so... There's that going for it. And I really found these visions to be very, very interesting and amazing. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what these mean going forward. I have some of my thoughts, but I won't get into that here. I also really enjoyed how he kind of gave Moraine a hard time in this book. I had spoken in my review of The Dragon Reborn about how I thought her character had become kind of a know-it-all annoying cryptic character. And I enjoyed kind of Rand being cryptic with her. I also liked Moraine more in this book. Maybe because she was uh, dishing it out but getting it kind of back as well. Uh, once again, Land's pretty non-existent, but it is what it is. Matt's also in this book, and he's part of Rand's journey, and he takes more of a supporting role this time around, which is okay, because he was featured heavily in the last book, at least in my opinion. And uh, he also gets to go to um, Rudian. He winds up getting hung, and Rand saves him. But his reward is that he can now speak another language. It's the Old Tongue, I think it's called. And uh, he also sees these visions of great battles. I'm definitely guessing this is going to be important in the future. And he might become like some master battle strategist or something. That's what I'm guessing. And he still complains a lot about being tied to Rand, which is always amusing. Another part of this book, which I found a bit deliberately paced but very interesting, was learning about all the different Aiel clans. Um, it was interesting to see how some of them kind of have feuds with each other and things like that. This was gone on um, about quite a bit in the book, and I'm sure we'll learn more in the future. And I really enjoyed it. Um, one thing I will say that brought this section of the book down a little bit for me and why I preferred Perrin's just slightly is um, the character of Abienda. Now, she was in the last book. I don't dislike this character. But I think she's a little bit one note and over the top right now for my liking. I'm sure there's a reason for this. And I have confidence that Robert Jordan will make her character more interesting in the future. But all Avienda really does in this book is give Rand a hard time and tell him he should be nice to Elaine. Now at first I thought this was amusing, but after about three chapters of this, it got kind of annoying to be honest. And I thought it did drag this part of the book down in terms of pacing as well. It was just a little much. We get it. <laughs> Avienda's giving Rand a hard time. Uh, another thing that I didn't totally love about this part of the book was the final battle, just because it felt very similar to the first three books. But then Robert Jordan threw me a twist uh, as Rand has this battle with Asmoden, Asmodine. Again, not really sure how to say that, sorry. And Lanfear appears as well, but I like how Robert Jordan put a different twist on it because he does... Uh, defeat this um, dark friend Asmodin, but he basically takes his power away, if I understand it correctly, from the Dark One, and Rand is going to uh, use this Asmodin to train him, basically, and Lanfear remains a very interesting character who I'd like to get a little more book time in these books, honestly, but again, I'm sure that's probably coming at some point, and I'm not sure at some times if she's angry with Rand or impressed with him, but she definitely seems to like him in some way because she had a connection with Luz Theron, which is kind of like his former self, I believe, if I'm understanding all this correctly. If I'm not, sorry, let me know in the comments. There's a lot going on in these books, and I think this is all very interesting. I also kind of like how Asmodin was kind of disguised as a gleeman, um, and it was kind of a mislead, and I thought that part was done well also. My third favorite storyline out of the four was actually the one that got the least amount of time, and that was the one with Min and, oh boy, Swan Sanche, I'm guessing is how to pronounce it. Uh, I was shocked by this storyline, and these chapters were amazing. 
Min is probably my favorite female character at this point. I really, really wish she'd get more time in these books. Every time she appears, I perk up. So I was shocked. She's basically in the White Tower. And again, Elida, Elida, still not sure on that one either, is becoming one of the great villains of these books. And I was shocked when she took the Amerlin, Amerlin seat away from Swan Sanche. They kind of have like a revolt, her and some of the other sisters and what really shocked me was when Swan Sanche basically lost her power she was stilled uh, I believe it's called this was amazing and shocking and I actually started really feeling for this character Swan Sanche and also Leanne who's kind of her right hand woman I guess you would say and it will be very interesting to see where this part of the plot goes from here yeah and Gawain was very annoying in this book that's all I really have to say about this section, even though I thought it was great and really advanced the plot development here. It's only my third favorite because there just wasn't that much of it, but these chapters flew by and I liked them a lot. All right, my least favorite storyline. Not that it was bad, it still had a lot of good elements, but it was definitely the Lane Nynaeve part of the story, Hunting for the Black Aja. They also meet uh, a third character who's a Saint, uh, Sanchen, a uh, woman named Eguian, Eguian, again, these names are really, really rough to pronounce, but um, I just found this storyline took a long time to get going. There's a lot of traveling on ships, which I generally find to be the least interesting parts of these books. There were a few plot developments here, but this whole thing just take to, seemed to take a long time to get going, this part of the story. Once it does, it's really good. Uh, I really appreciate the contrast between Elaine and Nynaeve, how Elaine is more calm and a bit more rational at times. Nynaeve has definitely got a little bit of a, of a hot temper in her and she gets riled up more. But I like the dyna dynamic between the two women and it was nice to see more point of views from Elaine's perspective in this book. Um, as far as the other character, Aegean, uh, I'm not sure yet. I don't really know enough yet. But... Um, I will say, although this storyline took a while to uh, get going, uh, it really perked up towards the end. Leandrin is a great villain who, again, I don't think has enough book time. One complaint I do have about all these books is that I feel like the villains need a little more time. Robert Jordan does a great job of telling us, you know, these villains are very menacing, but he doesn't really always show it to us. It's just characters talking about them. This is something I have a problem with in a lot of books and movies, things like that. Have the villains actually do something. Don't just talk about them. It makes them a lot more frightening, but maybe some disagree with me. I just wish the villains would get a little more to do, but I do love Leandrin as a villain in these books. And some of the Black Aja sisters uh, with her are amusing as well. But I will say once Nynaeve gets to fight a Forsaken towards the end of this book, that part was absolutely amazing, and I really enjoyed it. was almost like a one-on-one -on -one duel, which we haven't really had in this book, a duel of powers, and I was surprised that it seemed like Nynaeve won, although kind of at a great cost maybe to herself, so that will be interesting kind of going forward. Oh, uh, and a negative to this section, Bale Dolman is still an awful character, the worst character in these books in my opinion. For Robert Jordan, who does a great job of writing most characters, this this ship captain guy just seems like a bad, bad stereotype. And he's not interesting at all, in my opinion. But others may like him. This character just really bothers me. One other thing I did like in this section is the relationship between Elaine and Tom, which I found to be amusing. Tom is uh, a pretty amusing, entertaining character. So overall, I really, really like the Shadow Rising quite a bit. It was my favorite of the four books. Like I said, probably a four, seven, five out of five. So if I had to rank the books in order, I'd still probably put Eye of the World at the bottom, but it's close with Dragon Reborn. I don't know, those two are very close for me the more I think about it. Dragon Reborn in third, and then The Great Hunt in second, and Shadow Rising in first. Coming up next, I have the fifth book. I don't have it with me. I thought I did, but I don't. Fires of Heaven. I do already have it, and I will be starting on it soon. Who knows how long it'll take me to get through it. 
It is a little bit shorter than Shadow Rising, but still longer than the first three books, if that makes sense. So I'm really enjoying this Wheel of Time series. The world building is incredible. I thought the first three books had a lot of world building, but this fourth book has even more. So I'm curious to see if the fifth book is going to have even more world, world building, or if we're going to kind of settle in now and just get more plot development on each of the different storylines going on through the book or maybe everyone will hook up again i really don't know what to expect as i try not to uh, spoil myself on these books ahead of time so i know very little about the fires of heaven but i look forward to it if you have any comments on this book the shadow rising what you liked or maybe didn't like about it please please feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section below and i will get back to you as soon as i can as always thanks for your support and thank you very much for watching